So as we said again, this program is, is to accept a decimal number and it to display a binary. So write a program that prompt the user to enter decimal integer and display its corresponding binary value. Don't use Java integer to binary string. This is a, met a beauty method. So here again, we have our class scanner. We import the, uh, again, the scanner class is in the utility package. So we import only the scanner. And as we said earlier, the scanner will make it possible for us to get an input. So our main class name is decimal to binary. We have our main method. Then we create our scanner object name input. Now we ask the user to enter the integer. The user enter the integer to a variable named decimal. So now we start with our idea. So anytime we are looking for a binary number that is correspond to the decimal, we use the base two. The binary number, the base is two. Divide the number by two, then we keep the remainder. So that's what we are doing here. So first we declare variable name value and we assign the decimal value that we enter into it because we want to keep the actual value that we enter. So we create a second variable value. Now, if the user, first of all, we want to make sure the user didn't enter zero. If the user enters zero, the binary number of zero is zero. So zero is the same zero. Decimal number zero is the same as binary number zero. And so that's what we check here. And also because we are going to divide, we should be careful. So why the value that the user enter is not zero? We said we need the remainder. When we divide the number by two, we keep the remainder. So what we have here is value modulus two plus the binary string. The binary string is uh, an open empty string here because that we are going to attach values, not only uh, not only one value, and also uh, this value can go up to one. Then when you reach one, we keep the answer. So first, the value modulus two plus binary string will go to the binary string. Then we start with our first number. If the value we enter is 120, 120 divided by two, this will make us keep the remainder. Then we go to the next value. Again, this is a while loop. So we are going to divide by two always as far as the value is not zero, but always the last value we will get is one. Then we attach the one to the result. So after we finish, we print the output. And so the decimal number that we enter will be this binary string that will cover, will carry the answer. So I'll wait for a few seconds see if it's okay. The goal of this program again is how to use loops. Here, since I'm going to divide, if I use, for example, I start with 50. I want to look for the binary number 50. The binary number, the digit is only zero and one. And how can I get zero and one? Unless I divide the number by two. But again, we are using the base. The base number of a decimal value is 10 because a decimal value have 10 digits from zero to nine. Same applied to a binary number. Binary number, the digit is only zero, one. That's why the base is two. So you always divide the number by the base number. So for example, if they say uh, find or convert a decimal number to octa, octa, the base is eight. So I will divide by eight. The possible remainder will be from zero to seven if the base is eight. So the possible remainder for binary number, which is only two base is always zero or one. So if I divide 100 by two, the remainder is zero. 
then I'll divide 50 by two, the remainder is zero. I'm keeping the remainder. That's, the, that's what we are keeping here. You see, value modulus two, the first time I enter the value is 120. Is 120 not equal to zero? Yes, it's not equal to zero. Okay, if that is the case, then 120 modulus two, what is the answer? Is zero. Next time I will divide 120 by two. So I'm going to use 60 now. 60 modulus two, the remainder is what zero. I'm keeping the binary string. So I'll keep that zero also here. So I'll get two zeros now, three zeros. So actually that's why we have a value modulus two plus the binary strings. And we assign it to the binary string because we want to keep the previous digits there. If I don't put this here, the answer will be the last digit. I'll get only one digit. But for example, five, I don't want to get one. I want to get one, zero, one. So the previous digit, we want to keep it. So that's why this we have this variable here also. So wait for a few seconds if it's okay. Okay, so again, I'm going to pull, so I, I have the solution. Uh, we don't have enough time to go through all the remaining program. We have three more left. Maybe Monday we may go through one or two of them, then we do the review for the final. Actually, the third one is the same concept. But here we are looking for the octa. Octa is base eight. So the formula will be the same. The only thing that will change for octa, I have to, divide the number by eight, then I'll keep the remainder. So it will be value modulus eight. And the next value I will use is dividing by eight. So octa will be, the only thing that will change is this two. And we can save it and build it. And then run it. And we'll see here, for example, if I enter 10, the answer should be one and two. 10, and just again, I didn't change the string name, but this is just the Apple statement. But octa, if I enter 10, if I divide 10 by eight, what is the remainder? Of course, it's, it's one. No, so, no, sorry. Uh, 10 divided by eight, the remainder is two. So we keep two, 10 divided by eight, remainder is two. Remember when you divide a number by eight, the remainder is from zero to seven. In this case, 10 divided by eight, the remainder is two. Then I keep the answer is one. Now, when we reach one, as we said in binary, when the value is one, we don't go no more further, we keep the one. So always your last answer, if you cannot divide and get a whole number, you keep it. In a binary, always your last value will be one because it's only zero one. But with octa, since we have from zero to seven, sometimes your last value can be one, it can be two, it can be seven, but it can't go more than seven. Seven is the last. So in this case, the answer will be 12, why? Because when I divide 10 by two, the, uh, I mean, sorry, when I divide 10 by eight, the octa is eight, the base is eight from zero to seven. So when I divide 10 by eight, the remainder is two. So I keep two, the answer is one. When I reach one, anytime you reach any value from zero to seven, you stop. Because if I divide seven by eight, the remainder is not zeros. Always the numerator have to be bigger than the denominator. If the denominator is bigger than the numerator, you stop. So the last value was one. We had a one to the remainder two. You get it. So I'm going to.